production between Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Greenland and the Netherlands, directed by Isabella Ekloff, and its international premieres in the official section of the San Sebastian Film Festival. Uh, with us today in the press conference, I'm going to go from, in this order, Isabella Ekloff, who is the director of the film, Emil Johnson, Johnson the actor, Berta Larsen, the actors, and Kim Lane, screenwriter. So, as always, I'm going to ask the first question, and then please raise your hand so that I can give you the floor in order. Isabella, I would like to ask you, this is your second feature film as a director after Holiday in 2018, but you also have a, an extensive experience in films as a screenplay writer that are like Border, for example. I would like to explain, how did the idea of this film emerge? And, and this question is for Kim as well. Did you start to work together with that when you wrote it? Or how did the initial idea for the film come about and how was the screenplay written? Yes, yeah, so, oh, uh, hi. Um, yeah, uh, so I actually wrote Kim, and this I haven't told Kim this before, but I actually wrote him before I read the book. Um, but I only read the back of the book, and I knew I was going to love this book, so I wrote him directly, and then I read the book. Um, and it's because it's, uh, I think the essence of the story is so powerful and so important. That, and um, um, yeah, and uh, fortunately, nobody else had optioned the book uh, that the film is based on. And uh, and we started working together, and Kim was super open and generous and, and uh, understanding with the fact that the literary medium and the cinematic medium are very different, and, and that uh, I was allowed to shape basically his story in a way that works for cinema. So we had a really good collaboration. And this was a very long time ago, actually, yeah. <laughs> five years or four yeah, years? Yeah. Five? Four, I think, just, just after holiday premiered. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, the COVID lockdown uh, yeah. happened and uh, everything stalled. Yeah. So uh, it's been a very long process. Yeah, but but kind yeah, but but uh, very it's been very. Uh, Kim has actually written a lot, uh, most of the script. I've just basically given him <laughs> tasks <laughs> and then he wrote it. She's removed <laughs> half of it. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> also in editing, I had to because do. I am a novelist. I tend to write prose. Yes. And we, when you write the script, you shouldn't write prose. You write to write lines. Yeah. So that's uh, been a learning process for me. Yeah. So thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you. To you and Cecil. Mm. Please raise your hand so that I can give you the floor. Uh, nevertheless, I have not had the occasion to read the book upon which the film is adapted, but what draws my attention as in the audience, when you see it, the territory where it's located is something that is inherited from the book, or is something Gre Greenland to situate the story in Greenland? Or says something that you uh, provided. That's a, and also, how did you research this space, which contributes so much to the construction of the story itself in the film? The, the film is very close to the book, so the story absolutely takes p place in Greenland, and it's very important that it takes place in Greenland. It could, it's 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 very much about Greenland, um, or at least one person's uh, perception of Greenland, and um, and uh, what's going to say? What was the follow? -up? Oh, no, research. Yeah. We well, actually, to be honest, most of the research came from the book itself and from from Kim's experiences. And then, of course, we traveled there and we went there several times and talked to a lot of people, among others, Berta. Um, but uh, and 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 exploring the different characters. And also, we had a workshop with with women in Nuku about relationships, sexuality, and so on. But but actually, most of the stuff is from Kim. So now I lived in Greenland for 15 years, I worked as a nurse there, and I had the same crisis as described in the book, but on a, during a very much longer time. And uh, the village where some of the film takes place, I, I stayed there for five years with my family. So I know these people, the actual people in the film, and they don't act, they're just themselves in a very natural way. So uh, that was very touching for me to see them again. 
Quería preguntar. I'd like to ask uh, Emil and Berda, mainly uh, Emil, because it's a very complicated character. How did you prepare yourselves to portray this character, and how did and how did you direct the actors as well? How did you work with the rest of the of the cast? I think I know. I think he was referring. That was the second question for the director. No, the first question was, "How did you prepare yourself for the character?" That's right. First uh, of all, I um, read the book maybe like <laughs> 20 times, <laughs> okay. and uh, wow. uh, made lots of, or not 20, but a lot of times, again and again. And uh, uh, we met several times. Uh, went to Greenland once, and then. Uh, I guess, as with every character, work to understand what what drives the character and uh, what are what is the emotional need of the character, and um, I sort of try to uh, personalize that and understand that uh, what it means. Like, as for me, I think a big question for Jan in the movie is like, or what drives him is, can I be loved if I have been abused? And, how can a healthy love relationship look like for me? So he's constantly looking for validation in other people, uh, opening up in a in a very uh, uh, way without uh, boundaries or limits. Uh, so I think that was like a key. And uh, Isabella and I talked a lot about these kind of things. And then obviously I worked with the language a lot because I'm not Danish. I had to learn Danish. And then. Isabella's and direction usually you. was yeah. remember yeah. to smile <laughs> <laughs> and be friendly to everyone because that's your character. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the big difference between the character and you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something to smile every so often. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not maybe one of those directors who talks a lot, to be honest, you know, and does a lot of analysis and, and backstory and stuff. I. I, I think a lot of my work is in the casting, and when I find someone who I think understands the part and has a possibility to go into it, I, I think I, I am I'm very like open to whatever your interpretation of the part is, mm. uh, except that you need to smile more, of course. Yes. No sé si quizás Berda nos quisiera. Berda, would you like to say something about your experience of your character in the film? It's very important how she relates with uh, Emile's character. Would you like to say something about that? And the relation? Yes, you. Just talking. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, regarding to the whole relationship between my character and Yen, um, me, myself, personally, I have the experience of meeting that type of a person. I'm just going to repeat it. I feel like I you didn't get through, but it's in... It is very much personal experience regarding to my dysfunctional past within um, Upsu. Upsu. Um. Looking for, oh. seeking oh. Um, a dysfunctional person. So for me, it wasn't hard getting into the whole dynamic between the character I had and the one that Emil had. Um, so yeah, with that said, I hope that it answered your question. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, you did. Thank you. We have a question there. Congratulations for the film. I enjoyed it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, this uh, tentative. They, they try to integrate your character played by Emil Johnson and probably your personal experience, Mr. Lane. You try to integrate into na native society, native Greenland society, right? And so does the daughter. But the, the daughter visibly fails. Does, does, does Emil, in, in the end, feel integrated in, 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 um, in, um, in, in um, Greenland native society? And how does that link with, with the final? I mean, where he ba basically poisons his father. My hearing is terrible. My hearing aid is uh, in my pocket. <laughs> but uh, as far as I could understand, it's about the, uh, how the daughter integrates in the Green Andy community. And also the character of, of Jan. Yes. If, if, if he fails at, or if he succeeds in integrating. So. Yes. Well, well, as I said, I, I lived there for 15 years. The first seven years, I lived there with my family. When we arrived in 1989 to Nuuk, uh, my daughter was uh, 
one and a half year old, and my son was three years old. And so they were integrated, they went to school, uh, the children in kindergarten in the beginning, and then school, and they started speaking Greenlandic uh, uh, better than me, and then I tried to catch up with them and also learn to speak Grand Greenlandic, which is a, an extremely uh, complicated language to learn for a European. The verbs have 640, what do you call it, boining, uh, uh, conjugations, yeah. 640. And, uh, and I, I struggled to, to be integrated and become a Greenlander. Uh, so I learned the language pretty well. Um, and I learned to uh, eat the food. And I tried to uh, behave as a Greenlander. And that's why they started to uh, shouting after me at, on the street, hello, Kalak, uh, which uh, I looked up in the dictionary and it said it meant a real Greenlander. But uh, as time went by, I found out that what's in the dictionary and what's meant in real and in the street maybe may, could, would be two different things and that Kalak meant you big idiots. And so I was integrated in Greenland by being a big idiot. And uh, that became my identity in Greenland. Uh, after seven years, I was divorced from my wife and they went back to, to Denmark and I stayed there and I, I spiraled down into my, into my own crisis, which uh, led to a uh, uh, big uh, morphine abuse and uh, I was kicked out of my job and out of Greenland and returned to Denmark and sat down and wrote my novel, which has now become a movie. So I think the answer to the question is that ultimately Jan fails because he's kicked out. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think, I don't think the daughter fails actually. She's just removed from there by the grown-ups. Mm. Um, yeah. My daughter is fine today, and so is my son. Um, but she has this big uh, mensur or scar here after the dogs. Yeah. Uh, she's become an anthropologist. And she has a big dog. A second big dog, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she loves dogs. Raise your hand, yes, please. Hi, congratulations for the film. One of the things that I liked most about the film is that, above all, it goes against the expectations of the audience. For example, at the beginning, when the father, for example, looks at the camera, breaks the, four, the fourth wall when he reads the letter, or when all of a sudden you see the the wife of the protagonist accepts his infidelity. A doctor is recommended that he take drugs or drug himself. Well, could you explain, and this is a question for the director, whether you've borne that in mind, that say, to try to play against what the audience is expecting from the story. Did you conscientiously do that? Yeah, totally. See I love to, um, to work against um, expectations because it's... Because sometimes life is not dramaturgically clean and simple and it makes it much more interesting and to explore all the stuff that isn't necessarily so neat and, 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 uh, and um, story focused. So, and, and also it's fun, you know, and uh, we've been fed with this, you know, very Hollywoodish uh, dramaturgies, every, all of us since we were kids, and we know exactly what's going to happen, and it's boring. And so, so when you hang a, a gun on the wall, like uh, uh, Chekhov said, then you should not shoot it, because it's more fun to just watch the gun on the wall and, and uh, have the tension around that and then talk about something else. I would like to ask you about the importance of the territory in the film and in particular how you've worked from the photographic point of view. The photography is quite impressive in the film because it helps to construct the story itself. And I would also like to ask all of you whether 
the shooting and the difficulties, how hostile the territory was, conditioned your work uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, or was, or was this the case or not? Well, I mean, the, I think one of the, th so, uh, sorry, what was the first question about? That is the, the DOP, the pho photography, how important it was, because it's very important. Important, yeah. Uh, I mean, yes, Nadim is, uh, has some experience, a lot of experience with documentary uh, still photography as well. And I think that shows very much in the film. It's very important that he is like presence as almost a, f a, 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 another character in the room, somebody observing, somebody watching people's faces and, and being close and being um, um, curious, a curious camera that is interested in, in the people and what's going on. So, um, so I think, yes, absolutely, it's, uh, it's crucial that somebody like Nadim could take on that, uh, that uh, uh, artistic uh, task. And to the second part, yeah, I, I mean, there is the, the film industry is still developing in Greenland, so there was not that much equipment, so we had to had a lot of stuff shipped, which of course is difficult and expensive. Um, that means that Nuke in itself wasn't super difficult to shoot in. It's like a, it's like a, a, a provincial town, uh, but Kulusuk on the east coast was crazy <laughs> because, yeah. Their de-icing machine had broken down, for example. So when we were flying there, there was ice on the plane, and we had to turn around because if the plane landed, it would never lift again. And uh, yeah, there are like regular storms, and we were stupid enough to shoot in November because we wanted to have snow and not snow. But that just meant that we had like the worst winter storms like our, in November in, in Kurosok. So um, we really kind of shot ourselves in the foot. But that, it, it went all right. But we were really warned not to go there because it's just a tiny place in the middle of nowhere. So we could, have, we could have really fucked up, to be honest. <laughs> we could have really come home with nothing. And also, we discovered at some point that uh, there was uh, one of the lenses was, was uh, malfunctioning, and it was out of focus. That lens, everything we shot, because we had to shoot on 16, send it to, uh, I think, uh, Amsterdam, and get it back. The rush is back like a week or two later. We didn't discover that one of the lenses was faulty until like two weeks later, and then we had to throw away all that footage. So, yeah, it was uh, uh, challenging. But of course, that's one of the things that makes it interesting because if it wasn't challenging, then people would have done it a long time ago. So, yeah. I'd like to ask Emil. Emil, it's a very complicated. Uh, film and it breaks down the expectations of the audience in San Sebastian. San Sebastian is the international premiere. How has your, your character that you, that you interpret, that you portray, have you had any feedback, ha, any audience that have enjoyed the film due to the, how complex your character is? Have you received any feedback from the audiences here in San Sebastian after the premiere? Or? Um, not yet. It just finished and we just came here. In the past previous celestino international, but the international, uh, the international viewing the, uh, projections that have that are being given, have you on an international level? Have you received any feedback from from audiences because of the difficulty of your character? Um, this is this is the first showing. Yeah. Sorry, is the, so yeah, no I have I, I've actually spoken to no one who has seen it before. Llegarán ahora, entiendo los feedbacks. Feedbacks will be you will be receiving them shortly. I'm sure. Quería también en la misma. Along the same lines, and as a bit of a surprise, because it's a proposal, when the audience sees it, it breaks down a lot of um, things that but they might think. What are you, the cinema uh, references of this film, Mrs. Zubilava? Is there any tradition or, uh, from a, or is this something absolutely new? Or is it, is it a cinematographic a tradition of yours? Or what are your references vis-a-vis -vis making these kinds of films? What's your background on that? What, sorry, what kind of, what is my reference? See, kind of? well, the, this kind of film and the films that you've made, what are your references? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, well, Claire Denis, obviously. <laughs> um, it's, not so, it's not so apparent in this film, but in Holiday, for sure, you can see that I'm a very big fan of hers. So it's, it's extra amazing to be here um, when she's here. Um, 
Um, yeah, it's very obvious uh, references from he uh, Haneke and Seidel as well. But also like classics like Bergman, uh, Fass Fassbinder, a uh, bit of harmonic in Roy Anderson, yeah, all of those. Is anyone, if anyone has any further questions, yes? Yes, I would like to ask a question for Emil and for Kim. Emil, did you have contact with Kim to ask him about things that happened to the character because it's a story based on, on real uh, events or true events? And uh, Kim, how you saw your character, so to say, portrayed by Emil? Uh, yeah, I uh, spoke to Kim, I think, twice before we did the shoot, and uh, for quite a while, and asked a lot of questions, which I uh, had. And uh, at the same time, I think we also spoke about that this movie also is, is, is in one way separate from the book, and the character has a different name than the character in the book, and that my job as an actor was not actually to portray Kim in that way. I could, one could have made that choice, but that was not uh, what Isabella wanted. She wanted to develop it into also its own piece of art in a, in a different way, so I didn't... Like I didn't study how Kim walks, like, or how he talks, or uh, how he moves, and you know, not that kind of character portrayal. I more tried to understand what drove him at the time, and uh, yeah, how that trauma affected what happened in, in Greenland and during that period of his life. That's yeah. I don't feel that Emil portrayed me at all. He portrays the character of the movie. So it's important to understand that, uh, um, first of all, when I wrote uh, the book, the autobiographical book, it uh, detached, the story sort of detached itself from myself and became a sort of objective identity outside myself. That was a big relief for me because I could uh, put the story away and start anew. And then uh, when you publish a book, it has to go into the world and uh, manage by itself, maybe be uh, turned into a movie. And the movie, uh, of course, also has to detach itself from the book. So it's become a completely new work of art in its own rights. And uh, when I wrote the manuscript, I knew this wasn't the work of art, it was just uh, uh, a tool for Isabella. The manuscript is a tool, it's not a work of art. And uh, the work of art is, is the movie, and it belongs to Isabella uh, more than anyone else. I'm not too sure whether anybody else has a question to ask. If not, Big round of applause for the team of the film, and this is the end of the press conference. Thank you. <laughs>